Welcome back to another episode of Forbidden Depths. I'm your host, Queen Frostbidden, and we're here today to get down, dirty, and sultry by staying open, educated, consensual, and safe. If you're returning, welcome back to another episode. Thanks for supporting the channel and its growth. If, of course, you're new here, make sure you follow, like, and subscribe, because one taste will never be enough. Awesome. So thank you guys again for joining us today for another episode of Forbidden Depths. Today, we're going to do some dissecting, and I'm so excited to have Mistress Rogue be the person that's going to help us with looking at that. So again, go go ahead. She's been a guest on the podcast before. Um, if you don't follow her already, make sure you do. Um, it's at Mistress Rogue FL on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Okay. For Florida. Yes, for Florida. So she also has an amazing space if you want to become part of her um let me ask you yeah what you consider yourself for your dungeon like me like you a, a lot of people like a stable you know you're a horse in my stable I'm more of a kennel kind of dom like right. you're a puppy in my kennel what what do you do well uh, that's an interesting question. Thank you for asking, by the way, because things, you know, continuously changing and evolving and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, we started out as a kind of like a like a house, you know, okay. house of girls. We were all kind of trying to figure it out and stuff like that. Right. Um, working together as dumps, learning from each other. Um, and I it, and I think now we're all kind of evolving into kind of each each of us are doing our own thing. Right. So the Dom House currently is evolving into a brand in a venue, mm-hmm. um, in a space for people to come in and, and film and do their sessions and play. It's some sort of like kink oasis. Right, okay. Call it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not mm-hmm. like, at the beginning I was uh indeed like headmistress of the dumb house i guess i still am Mm -hmm. um but i feel like now i'm more of a host and kind of like you know the the creator of it right um more than just like the leader of a of a of a group or anything like that that's like not not really happening anymore Right. Okay. So it's kind of um, like a mutual partnership and you're the overseer just to make sure everything goes the way it's supposed to go. Yeah. Yes, okay. exactly. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So um, I know we kind of touched lightly on it the last time we talked, um, kind of how you developed um, your dungeon and stuff. So mm-hmm. what was the main inspiration for you wanting your own space? I can't work under anyone else's space. I am just, I guess you could say I'm a little bit of a control freak. Mm -hmm. Like I like coming into a space and have all the tools organized the way that I think works best. Right. And I think that's just something that you can only achieve when you have your own space. You know, I've gone to... Um, and, 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 and I think it's awesome when a, a domain or a dom or a top or anything goes into somebody else's space and is able to just kind of like walk through and just kind of use everything. But to yeah. me, I feel like I am, I'm so connected and involved with every item that I have in the dungeon because I put it there. Right. You yeah. know, that is like my house. So when clients and subs come into my dungeon, it's basically they're coming into my place. It's just mm-hmm. my place. Yeah. That's how I see it. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I just, the inspiration to me is I want to do some kinky stuff mm-hmm. in the safest way possible, in the cleanest way possible. Yes. Um, uh, you know, with quality toys, because I've Mm -hmm. gone to some dungeons and then they have some like really low quality tools. And I'm just like, I can't suspend with this really suspicious looking rope here. Right. That's a safety (laughs) issue, right? Yeah. So I I guess it's kind of a way to um, quality control and safety Mm -hmm. control. 
everything that I do because at the end of the day, like if someone gets hurt, it's like that's like a lot of trouble, man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's like physical, mental, and financial strain all in financial, one. Financial, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I've had some funny accidents at the dungeon, but you know, thankfully nothing major. So like right. And and it's because, you know, it was on my place. I know what I was doing. I knew where mm-hmm. like first aid kit was. Some other places don't have a first aid kit. Like, yeah. It can be sketchy. It's just it's yeah. it's a little, it's a little bit a sketchy, could be right. a sketchy line there. And not everyone is as informed. Like if you're listening to this podcast and you know anything about um, contacting or interacting with multiple doms. Everybody has their own way of doing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a reason they do stuff a certain way. It's because they have certain information available to them. Maybe other people didn't have that available. Maybe they don't have first aid available to them. Maybe they've never had like a first aid course. So I myself think that everyone, whether you're a dom, whether you're uh, a top and you don't consider yourself a dom, if you're like a switch, you play any role, if you are a submissive, regardless of where you fall on the spectrum, I feel like first aid classes can help you regardless. What do you What do you think about first aid? I think so too. Uh, actually, this year, I, I don't think I can go um, financially. I have like goals and stuff that just require me to save every little dollar I get. Right. into my financial goals for like retirement and stuff but uh this year dom con la is offering a cpr certification which i wanted to attend yeah. um and it, it it's just you know given by the by the professionals there and mm-hmm. i think that the fact that they're offering that and like you know advocating for safety is so important yes 100 you know it's uh, one of the things that made me feel like you know the, the, the real community is indeed on top of that stuff and that's and yes. that's so refreshing to see yes and um I've interacted with doms that both know how to do first aid kind of stuff and mm-hmm. then ones that don't so I'm not trying to like shame anyone. I'm just suggesting in order for you to be safe, educated, everything to be consensual and be where it needs to be, because there's always that what if, right? Yeah, I feel like I feel like somebody who doesn't know like basics of first aid um, should not be doing like extreme kinks. Yes. You know, you shouldn't be sticking needles in anyone's uh, genitals and right. you shouldn't be opening some wounds and you shouldn't be drawing blood and you shouldn't be right. doing a lot of edge play. And and it's true, not not every dom is like hardcore. They, they don't mm-hmm. all need to, you right. know, like what are the possibilities if someone like gets injured, get getting edged, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. But it can it can happen. So yeah. I think it's important for sure. Yes, yes, 100 percent I do too. So um, now you don't have to go to like a big kink event to get first aid certified. Anybody that no. doesn't know, you can literally just contact, um, someone in your local community, um, and they can give you more information. Even if it's like a health department, they can give you information about first aid courses. Also, I know the uh, red cross does a lot. That's where I got certified through the red cross because they do like, um, mm-hmm. traveling teams where they have classes held at like schools or, um, I think the last course I took was with um it was some school function there was a school function that was local and they were having CPR courses so they do that a lot whenever it's around school settings because teachers teachers aides people like that they need to know first aid too and if you're going to be involved in an environment where you're teaching or you're doing something like that with someone which is kink too yeah you need to be educated oh absolutely I think so yeah for sure That's what I I thought as well. So um, that kind of leads me to one of the biggest conversations uh, that I wanted to have today about impact play. So first aid, I feel, is extremely important, especially if you're doing the heavier impact play, because Mm -hmm. it's one of those things you have to know um, how to take care of the submissive. You have to know how to have those pre-negotiation terms and then the aftercare that follows. So Kind of tell me what your process looks like whenever you are talking to someone, doing the negotiating side, 
And then um, after, of course, all of the impact play and you're kind of, um, so it will be a new sub, someone that you haven't yeah. been exposed to okay, before. Yeah. So you're right. kind of finding your way around. Right. So if I were to describe my process when mm -hmm. meeting somebody new, I honestly, I don't know how everyone else does it, but I usually keep it quite business over the email. Right. Um, I don't talk a lot other than, you know, the booking process. Are you sending yes. a deposit? Are you sending a consultation fee? Great. Tell me more or less what you're looking for. Do not be too mm -hmm. specific. Um, I like to keep things vague uh, for safety, yes. you know. Uh, but once once the person, you know, takes th that leap of uh, trust, a leap of faith, as you would say, right. uh, come into the dungeon and, you know, very nervous, very like a little anxious but excited like you can tell every single person comes in and then they're like oh god what's gonna happen yeah. you know there's not a lot there has not been a lot of talking and stuff <laughs> some people get sweaty I know oh yeah <laughs> and that's normal like don't I think like that, it yeah I'm like be nervous <laughs> yeah <laughs> So don't think that if you're one of those people that like sweat or something that we're going to be like, ooh, you're gross. Get out. No. Oh, no. <laughs> when they come I'm in, nervous. the first thing, you know, I will open the door and I'll be like, hi, how are you? Mm -hmm. What's your name? Confirm your name with me. So I'm not opening the door right. to some bando. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, okay, once I verify it's them, I just, um, you know, break the ice a little bit and I'm like, mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Are you okay? And they're like, yeah, fine. I'm just a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, you know, I like to tease them around a little bit. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, that's, a, that's a good thing. Would you like some water? Right. You know, like it's very intimidating. But once they cross that door, I make sure that they feel comfortable. Yes. Um, and safe because, you know, it's somebody who's going to put, you know, their hands on them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um the first thing that I do is just just sit on 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 my table just sit and talk right. face to face I offer them some water I get some water too mm -hmm. um I like to get hydrated before I jump in because you know it's exercise basically I'm working out yeah <laughs> fantastic I'm not complaining a marathon um, oh my goodness yeah Some days I feel I, like I ran a marathon <laughs> yes of course I love <laughs> it um and then I just asked them if it's the first time and you know let's say it it is the first their first time um mm -hmm. um and I usually when it's someone's first time mm -hmm. I do like a tasting and mm -hmm. I kind of like explain a little bit what toys toys do what right and how they feel Right. And I make sure to explain to them that they have a safe word and they can stop me anytime. Right. Um, and, you know, encourage them to use their, their, safe, their safe words, not mm -hmm. just safe words to stop, but safe words to indicate that they're having a great time and that they want more intensity. Yes. Uh, because everyone, everyone's uh, threshold is different. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be like a crazy word like you don't have to come out saying yeah. like on a monopia like that's that's not realistic like yeah uh, like something it, it depends on the vibe yeah. it depends on the vibe that somebody gives me if somebody mm -hmm. gives me a vibe that they might be like there enough to just have a very simple safe word like usually mercy is a safe yeah. word that yeah. basically only means to like kind of slow down and like mm -hmm. you know chill chill out a little bit Right. Um, maybe I'll give them that depending on what I'm going to do. Um, mm -hmm. but if it's someone new, I just use like <clears throat> standard traffic system, red, yellow, green, yeah. green right. for good, more yellow for stop a little bit, slow right. down, maybe change something and red for complete stop. Check with me. This is not working. Yeah. Um, I usually try to drive people mm -hmm. up to the edge of yellow. Right. Um, and I think that impact play is it's it's all about reading the the bottom's body. Yes. You know, like you know, there's like there, there's like two types of bottoms. There's like great bottoms, and then there's the 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 shy bottoms that mm -hmm. that they need a little work. 
you know i yeah i think this is maybe if like you know possible subs or clients are watching <clears throat> there's like uh, a type of bottom there's like a behavior that is really difficult to work with and mm -hmm. that's when let's say i have a person on the on the san andrews cross and you know they're like strata like this mm -hmm. and, and 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 i'm just going right? right and i'm like changing the intensity and like you know harder and, and they're just not moving not doing anything no language yeah like nothing no, i'm no like body language do you like this <laughs> yeah <laughs> is it is it good is right. it bad like yeah. can you give me something <laughs> yeah and we encourage that green? you need to communicate somehow you know what i mean like how are yeah. we supposed to know how to continue or if if maybe you need some harder or softer impact plate like, like we need that communication yes. and 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 sometimes i'll be so so surprised and i'm thinking we did this like maybe an introductory uh one hour session and the person wanted lots of impact and stuff and then we're mm -hmm. done right and then and this whole time i don't know if they liked it if they enjoyed yeah. it I, and then at the end they're like thank you so much mistress that was amazing and i'm like yeah. sure yeah. you're welcome yeah <laughs> got lucky i guess <laughs> yeah see like that's please it's kind of confusing yeah feedback i need some feedback and the power exchange right <laughs> so if you don't let the person that is topping you know then there's not that power exchange there's just me doing my thing or you doing your thing or you receiving that and then at the end you're like oh well that was an amazing experience well I didn't I didn't get to feel the amazing part because I didn't know what was happening with you yeah like the power exchange is where you find that middle ground so that it's like an incentive yes right? yeah so we're so so we're both so we both can either be very reactive you know, yeah. I'd be maybe laughing and feeling that sadist side of me and, yeah. and they will be like, you know, moaning and like really feeling the, the sensation of, of the whip yeah. or whatever I'm using, or they can also be, which is equally enjoyable, uh, a bottom that you can, I can see his body moving mm -hmm. or their body moving. And I can kind of tap into more of a flow in which I'm not really talking. I'm just doing right you know yeah. and those two worlds are absolutely fucking uh beautiful both yeah. but but there is one thing in common a connection yes and that connection does not have to be verbal right um it can be just a, a body movement a body mm -hmm. like you know like a, like a bar a back arc, arc like yes uh, i don't know it's just you need to communicate because <clears throat> like going inwards i know that a lot of subs will will naturally go inwards but if you know that you will go inwards at least kind of like tell me yeah beforehand right you know i can totally work with somebody if they come in and they're like mistress um i get very quiet mm -hmm. but i if i will enjoy it and if, if it's not good i'll let you know right that yeah. helps me you know yeah just some sort of communication right yeah because that's huge right so um i know whenever i first got into the art aspect you know whenever i was transitioning from real life to like online stuff i'm like why does no one ever film the before and after everybody just gets like the middle segment so yeah if you're watching like um something on pornhub or like clip sales or something like that you don't get to see all of the negotiations that happened before the communication and then yeah. you don't get to see the aftercare so there's this stigma like oh well, you're not allowed to talk about it you just show up and stuff happens and then you just leave no yeah no. i think a lot of it is because um especially on the more extreme side right mm -hmm. from i want to i want to claim that the viewer who is looking for a specific kink they're not looking for like the emotional value of it. I mm -hmm. think that a lot of the audience is just looking to get off watching right. something. Right. Um, 
but but there are a lot of creators that will you know add that that little spice and I like to do that too yes. you know I like to I like to film something and then either show some like the bloopers mm -hmm. uh, or something like lighthearted and, and and I like to show pictures or video like a short video or picture of aftercare right. Yes. Aftercare can also be very like vulnerable. Like maybe sometimes like there will be some uh subs or bottoms or slaves that they don't want to be seen uh mm. in that very like in that light deep right. subspace aftercare vibe. Um and you know you know needs to be respected as well. Yes, um 100%. but you, you you bring a very valid point there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um like not everyone that appears in um, the performing kind of situations are performers. So people not being com comfortable or confident in front of a camera, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I feel like, especially like civilian people, people in the vanilla life that don't really yes. know the ins and the outs of BDSM, they get into yeah. it and then they don't practice that stuff. And it ends up being some kind of like abusive situation. And that's not what we're about mm -hmm. at all. No, the not only, at all. The only time I'm going to be like extremely hard or abusive is if someone is paying me to be, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and they consented, like that is part yes. of the scene. I get it. Okay. I get what you're saying. It's yeah. important to show, you know, I feel like we should totally like advocate for that stuff. Like yeah. maybe you see a really cool video and then you're like, where's the aftercare? Yeah. You know, yeah. be like, oh, okay. People want to see that. It's, mm -hmm. it's cool. And it's not for everyone. I'm not saying that everyone is forced to kind of do it, but what I'm, I'm saying is anybody that's listening today that doesn't really know the process. Um, whenever you jump into BDSM, you want to make sure that everybody talks about everything, right? Because absolutely, we do want to make it a consensual environment. That was oh, like yeah. the the huge blow up that um, Pornhub had with all of the the crazy stuff that went on, you know, like oh they had to take down a huge like two fraction. million videos. Yeah, yeah. And um, but it it's because either... there wasn't consent. Yeah, there were no either... documents. There were people that were kidnapped. You yes. hear about that stuff? There was yes. a girl that was kidnapped, and she was abducted by this a bunch of guys. Mm -hmm. And they had her in a in a house or something, and they were filming porn. Her mom found her yeah. through the porn videos. Yeah, like she's. I mean, I'm thankful that that she found her, obviously. But I yes, mean, yes, of course. But imagine like how traumatizing. trauma. The trauma. How do you get out of the house after that? Yeah, yeah. And I think that you know, like. It's just, it's, it's hard for sex workers and makes it harder for sex workers. But yeah. at the end of the day, like we all need to put those idea, IDs up there. Yes, 100%, 100%. And mm -hmm. I feel like they should have never, no one should have ever been able to post anything anywhere without having valid ID anyway. Like, that's, that's what I'm saying. How, how was that allowed? Yeah. Like that's that's Look, number one rule. A little loophole. <laughs> Regardless of whether they're making money or not, you should still have to say, "Hey, this is me. I'm real, and I'm willing to like if something happens on my account or from me, I'm willing to face the consequences." Because yeah. at the end of the day, um, we were already doing that. Yeah, we were exactly. already putting our IDs up. You know what I mean? So why do these people that don't follow the same rules as us, why would they get to post anyway? Whether they're making money or not, they shouldn't be allowed to post. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the, and the, and the other thing is like, it's so hard to actually get videos taken down and not just because oh, yeah. of one platform, it will go on one platform and it will go on every platform possible. Yes. Like once it hits the internet, it's going to be in the internet forever. There's no yeah. way to take it down. And people do pirating. So even if you do get mm -hmm. it taken down from like, say you got it taken down from like 10 fucking websites, there's no guarantee that it won't pop back up a month later or a week later. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even on my, even on the content that's behind a paywall, I consider those at, 
a very realistic risk of some hater yes. buying the thing and just put it off free or whatever. Like, I am expecting that to happen any moment and yeah. I'm okay with that. Well, my biggest thing is um, back whenever OnlyFans got really, really big um, in the beginning, everybody was like, oh, I'm going to go. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go get all of this content from these people and then sell it on mine. So they went and stole all this content from these oh people. My God. And then they would put it all on their page and be like, oh, well, you can just pay a dollar to get in and you can see everything that I paid like five or $10 a month for. And I'm just like, one that's yeah. fucking illegal that's pirating yeah. content the, the, there will be a lot of redditors doing this it's yeah. nasty it's nasty yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've totally seen that <laughs> uh there was somebody that how vicious sub- L- listen it's fucking ridiculous like if, <laughs> if you're so hell-bent on making money in the adult industry go into it yourself because i'm gonna tell you there's somebody out there for everyone right you're always going to have an audience somewhere. It doesn't matter if you are mm-hmm. disabled. I'm going to tell you, mm-hmm. there is a ton of people that are into disabled play. Mm-hmm. Like oh yeah, absolutely. It, there's a kink for everything. I mean, yeah, you don't have to steal from someone else. Like you can literally make your own shit, right? Yeah. Um. And- <laughs> yeah. There's no reason. There's yeah. no reason to do that. Please just make your own. <laughs> like It'll I sell remember- the promise. 100%. Well, it'll sell if you put work into it. That's because true. <laughs> not everyone wants to do that work. You know what I mean? If I had a dollar for every person that wants, like, oh, you're doing OnlyFans? Teach me how to do it. Like, I'm sure I can mm-hmm. learn it in two days. Oh, oh. my God. Uh, or they think they're going to be like millionaires in like a month. Like, where well. are you getting your information? <laughs> That's funny. I mean, I've been doing OnlyFans, I, I have been on OnlyFans since 2019 and i've made an okay amount of money there but i feel like since i started it's only now that i've been getting more serious about the online stuff right and listen it's it, i've been doing this since 2019 so this is mm-hmm. like a few years it's not like a few months right yeah <laughs> you have to make the content edit the content mm-hmm. get, get get model releases and that's like, exhausting get outfits on think about the the content you're gonna create um like does it have a purpose or is it just sexy like right there's so much that goes into it it's hard work i i love it i am yes. all about it you know but it is hard work mm-hmm. for sure and it's investing in your brand right so yeah by the way this is my logo I was going to ask you about it. I fucking love it. Tell me how you, how you developed it. Well, um, as you know, oh, let me get comfy. As you know, this is uh, my little new brand logo I made. I'm a graphic designer, so I made it myself. Mm-hmm. Really proud of it. Uh, let me get close to you. Yeah, so, show me all of it. Show me right all of it. here. Um, this is basically uh, Mistress Rogue's brand and mm-hmm. also the tattoo that my slaves get. Right. So um, this shape here is for, it's like a bat shape because that's my spirit animal, mm-hmm. of course. Um, have the horns because you have, have to have the horns. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the feminine symbol mm-hmm. and the goddess uh the moons Mm -hmm. and inside is um what's it what's the name of it uh is it the perfect the circle of life Mm -hmm. i remember the name of it you can tell you can tell it here it's like that perfect shape yeah um it basically means that once someone has this brand on them uh because originally i designed it to be on on someone's skin it's right. basically mean um, it, the, it'll be protected by mm-hmm. like the goddess energy and that comes into when I am their mistress. Right. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's my brand. Like you see that anywhere? Yeah. Safety. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like safety above everything else. And yeah, it's there protection. are a lot of people that need that like sense of um home almost like belonging yes 
Yes, you know, even though I look very hardcore sometimes and I'll do very like intense scenes. I was actually talking to this about to my slave uh, yesterday. There's mm. like the the very like dark schools of Domez and then there's oh, like yeah. the, the 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 more healer uh mm -hmm. you know nurturing and yeah. even though i am very hard in like the things that i like to do and the kinks i'm very intense very primal and all that stuff i am very much on that like <clears throat> uh like healing guiding mm -hmm. like nurturing like a balance um, of like green witch <laughs> and sorceress yes i guess uh i don't have like that uh malice when it comes to like take advantage of people right. if they're not into it you know yeah um usually try to find a, a middle ground like mm -hmm. what can you offer me and in exchange for my guidance yeah but it's all in a very positive um mm -hmm. like vibe I'm not here like trash talking you for right. no reason as you right. like open the chat like fuck yeah. you bitch give me your money because you're worthless yeah. like you know like if they ask me for it great that's fine but like right. it's more of like tell me your deepest secrets and yeah. how can I make you feel something very intense based mm -hmm. on that kind of it's more of like and a dream and come true it's like compatibility you have to have compatibility for both yeah. of you to enjoy it right i do yeah because if 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 there's not that connection and i feel a little bit like a fetish dispenser mm -hmm. and and don't get me wrong i'm a great fetish dispenser like i'm a fucking right. walking dictionary like yeah do you know how to yes mm -hmm. <laughs> but i want to do it in a way that like i'm having fun they're having fun yeah. i don't feel used i don't want to feel more used. than a job it's more it's way more yeah, yeah for sure because we will we want to feel like we want to be there and we want you to feel like that too right i also want to feel like i did something of value for you yeah, yeah. you know you're a fucking therapist yeah that's a what little, i consider myself I, like a little witchy yeah. uh coach yeah, yeah. 100 100 <laughs> yeah so, actually i wanted to show you uh before i forget i want to show okay. you this flogger that my uh colleague mistress mercy made uh got Ooh. me for as a gift i don't use it very much mm -hmm. She gave now, me this. What materials is that? Leather. This is wood. Mm -hmm. Says Mr. Strog, and I think this is like paracord. Okay. It's one of those cutesy custom-made yeah. floggers, but since flogging is like my jam, mm -hmm. I think she gave this to me as a Christmas gift or as a yeah. birthday gift. I just wanted to show it off because it's so cute. Oh, I yeah, it. I love it. So that was actually going to be my next uh, question. So whenever you're doing impact play, what are your favorite implements? Ooh, let me see if I got some here. Hold up. Uh, yes. Yeah. So my favorite are the floggers. Mm -hmm. I like to start with the floggers. I don't want to scare them out too soon. <laughs> right. Because it's very easy to scare them out. <laughs> But I'm going to show you basically what I used to begin with. And I'm going to show you a, another flogger that I got made for me by a really cool brand called mm -hmm. um, Unique Unique Kink. Okay. They made this custom made uh, flogger. You can't really see it in this light, but it says, it says Mistress Rogue. And right mm -hmm. here has the uh symbol as well the same yeah. one and it's like black and gold really mm -hmm. nice leather it's very thick so um i like using something like this for a beginner because yeah. it hits really softly really it just makes mm -hmm. more more noise than anything yeah. right you know um so this is one of my favorite to begin with mm -hmm. and then we have the famous really everything's black apparently here yeah um 
<laughs> so here you got here you have it um this is just a basic mm -hmm. suede flogger can take a lot of use really and yeah. it's just very light actually yeah. it's like a medium it's medium medium weight and mm -hmm. i like to use this um uh, to start up and you know kind of build up that mm -hmm. uh body warm right um, I also have one of my recent very favorite, and this is a latex blogger. Yeah, that has a little bit more bite, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that nice, though? Mm -hmm. Even I the handle is rubber. Yeah. So where did you get this one? Uh, one was a gift from, look how good that looks like black. I know. And red. Wow. That is gorgeous. I just need like a different backdrop. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm just always looking at that stuff. But, um, I got this one from Goddess Particle, uh, one of my partners mm -hmm. and I bought the, the, the pair for it. So I actually have two because mm -hmm. I like the Florentine. I yeah. like to use both right and then when they're a little warmer ready for a little bite i like to bring out my uh crop mm, yeah um what does it say on it i caught some lettering uh it's just uh, at the, the brand okay um this is like a real crop it's not mm -hmm. like a bdsm crop because right. the bdsm crops suck <laughs> Oh my so, goodness. <laughs> those are the ones that you get on Amazon that they're, they're not good. The um, tips break so easy. Have you found you that? need a real crop? Like right where they connect. Yeah. Like, so look at this thing. You look at mm -hmm. this thing. I'm trying to focus on it. Okay. This thing is like very well made. There's mm -hmm. no way this is getting out of it. Right. Uh, one thing I want to talk about here with the with the crop, <laughs> most people are like terrified of it, and yeah. with reason, because if you don't know how to use the crop, you can easily make someone hate it, like not in the good way. Yeah. So, um, for all, all baby domes out there, please learn to use the crop before you uh, traumatize somebody. Cause if I had a yes. dollar for every guy that comes in and, and sees the crop, I'm like, not the crop, not the crop. And I'm like, I think it's because they don't know, <laughs> like the tip, they don't know how yeah, to you, strike you have, with it. You have right? to like hit with this at the beginning and then get a little more spicier. You can't just yeah. go in with the whole thing. It's like, yeah. it's not good. Then where they're ready for a little more, I come in with my little tail. Oh yeah. This is very nice. I, 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 I like to be very flowy mm -hmm. with my tools. This is actually also goddess particles. She gave it to me because um, I wanted to practice before I got uh, like a, like a pair custom from this store. Right. Uh, which is uh, a seller from FetLife and I, for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of the account. Mm -hmm. I'll link it later on the comments. Okay. Um, extremely well made, great quality. She's had these for years. Mm -hmm. And then when they're really, really, really ready, before I send them out to subspace, <laughs> mm -hmm. we got the famous bullwhip. Mm, yeah. You know, this thing will, I don't know if you can hear it. Ah, I don't know if you can hear you can a crack hear a from little, there. Yeah. A little bit. But this thing is amazing. It's a mm -hmm. finisher for me, for sure. Um, yeah. Not a lot of people can take it. But, you know, I, I you can hit with a bullwhip without drawing blood. Oh, yes. So give it a try, guys. Just yeah. give it a try. <laughs> and start small with things that cover yeah. a wide area like you know how she was talking about kind of starting with the flogger there's a reason right the more yeah. educated you get the more knowledge you have well the floggers cover a larger surface area right so you're not feeling like this condensed like one little small area so instead of you feeling like pain in one tiny little area and a lot of it you just feel a lot spread out over a larger surface area 
right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And of course, my favorite impact tool are my hands. Mm. You know, there's nothing like a good spanking, a good grabbing, a good pulling, Mm -hmm. fingers going places. Like, hands are always, you know, I'm actually kind of getting into a little bit of like just no tool dominance. Um, And sometimes I feel very like primal in that sense. Like, Mm -hmm. I want to show dominance without having to show any tools. Right. You know, it's like, it's like raw. It's like very primitive and Mm -hmm. like go back to basics. It's all energy. Yes. You know, and I think that's like really hot. So I've been getting into that lately, but I I love the floggers because they can get really technical. They can Mm -hmm. get really flowy. It's just fun. Meditative as well for me and for them. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. And that all goes back to kind of like, um, therapy session, right? You're there Mm -hmm. for a reason. They're there for a reason. And the power exchange can be a very beautiful thing, but it's a matter of communicating so that the power is exchanged between both of you. And it's not just like one person has all the power and they're just holding it in, not communicating. It's Mm -hmm. a more positive experience if you're open and you communicate with the person that you're topping or bottoming, right? Yeah. Like I'm actually emotions. Yeah. I'm actually starting to um thinking of developing like a new way of uh connecting with somebody before they come into the dungeon um mm-hmm. and and it's I'm, I'm developing like a series of questions that are like completely right. non-sexual right. that can help me like kind of get a sense of who they are what they're looking mm-hmm. for whether whether what they lack and maybe right. like places in their mind that i can access yeah. Um, because it's like completely cerebral to me, you know, mm-hmm. and you can create a really deep connection with somebody. And I look to create connections with my subs. It's, there's no, right. there's no wall between us. Like I right. want, I, I mean, I'm polyamorous. I want to connect with my subs if they right. allow it. And, you know, what safest place than your dominatrix your mistress that is there to make you feel good but also I you know I play that role like I'll listen to you right because I think it's important that I know what's going on in Mm -hmm. your heart and your mind when you come in maybe like you know we all have lives like if someone comes in and then they really Mm -hmm. need a spanking for it because they're having a really shitty day like I want to hear about it yeah. I'll hear about it. I'll ask you about it. If, if you want to talk about it, let's talk about it. I think it's important. Yes. Yeah. And that's how you leave this session feeling like you are um, walking taller. You feel like a weight's been lifted. You feel like yeah. um, you walked in with all of this like pressure and just condensed anxiety or pain or maybe just stress, overall stress. And then you leave and you're like, yeah, this is yeah. what it's supposed to feel like. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right, and I and I love that. It's very fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, one hundred percent. So, um, whenever you are talking to them about impact play, what are some questions that you ask them to kind of know where you need to start? Um, I usually ask them if they have any injuries or any like medical conditions that I should know of, maybe surgeries, right. maybe bad knees that can't crawl around. Right. I also have like knee pads, so yeah, you know, crawling might not be a problem anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially if I'm doing any like electro play, you have mm-hmm. to ask if they have a pacemaker and everything like oh, that. Yeah. Um, always want to make sure that I'm not hurting them in a bad way. Um, I I usually also go around and touch them and kind of, uh, uh, test like their flexibility Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I, I, I like to, you know, when you, you know, sessions to me are a lot like first dates, um, especially like a first, first time session I consider that like a first date and I like to treat it as, as such. Imagine you are like at a nightclub 
and you find somebody you want to dance with and you kind of lock eyes and then you kind of get close and uh you know there's like something going on you just kind of don't talk a lot just kind of feel it out and kind of vibe Mm -hmm. and kind of dance and you know it kind of like progresses from there I feel like a session with me is basically kind of like the same vibe Mm -hmm. you know it's they come in we talk and I will I will know immediately if they are open to connecting or if they're just there because they want to get their kink done yeah you know and, and and the person who is open to connect will get a very 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 different mistress Mm -hmm. than the person who is like clearly just wants to do a sounding session or just want pegging or whatever yeah and then i'll be like okay and we take both of those clients don't think that we don't cater to that because we do Mm -hmm. it's just um it's different yeah and it's like having sex and making love yes (laughs) yes <laughs> just yes. like that I just think like we kind that. Of share that it's one of those things like I always tell them I can be the minute dom that you need but my preference is the lifetime dom that's right yeah mm-hmm. so yeah and I've and I have found like I have current slaves that started out as like clients and then they slowly mm-hmm. became more of like a mix of both Right. Um, and, the, and the reason is because, listen, I have a business at the end of the day. Yes, it's my lifestyle, it's my passion and blah, blah, blah. But I still have to pay for a dungeon. I have to pay for a lot of things. Like this is how yes. I like make all of this crazy stuff happens. Like right now I want to buy a, a vacuum tower. That mm-hmm. thing is going to cost maybe like $1,400, mm-hmm. like basic, basic. Yeah. And, you know, I want to, I want to offer this for people. Yeah. I want to, I want to get some crazy shit. I want my dungeon one day you come in and it's like a, like a museum. Yeah. Like a kinky museum that there's like some artwork on the walls and it's just like, yeah. whoa, optical illusions and some out of this world stuff, but mm-hmm. I need money for that. Yeah. So. And you may go there for one thing and then find something else that it's, ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> exactly. Like, I want to try that too. Yeah. So if I can, if when I find this uh, slaves that, you know, we, we obviously have a connection, we have a great time. Um, mm-hmm. If they can find a way to help provide to make those dreams come true, not just for me, because they're going to enjoy them too. Oh yeah. Then, oh, yeah. then that becomes like, we're going to do this for, for many, many years. Right. Like I'm open yeah. to that type of relationship. Always, yeah. always. It's much fulfilling than just do a session here, do a session there. Like, no, I want to connect. That's for like, sure. I always compare that also to like, um, whenever you, you are, um, having like a sexual relationship with someone that first time may not be the best time like I always enjoy sex like six months or a year later whenever we know each other's spots whenever there's yeah. chemistry and it's like growing you know to me that's a better experience right I agree no a hundred percent you know I like to put my music I like to feel the vibe mm-hmm. I like to have a snack you know right. I, I know there's like a lot of doms that like to go and and have dinner before they go to the dungeon and stuff mm-hmm. i i i i can't yeah i like to that's have like, dinner that's after if I do after something. oh my yes. gosh that's after. whenever i do it i like it yes. after i like it after like a little debrief now we have something yeah. to talk about yes. and we're not so obvious at a public place just you know just a femme fatale you know, looking just you know looking into your eyes and you're like spilling your drink like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and if it's a positive experience for you both you have more to talk about you have a deeper connection and oh, yeah. the conversation's easier to flow like that right because then you can use it as aftercare I like to use those moments as aftercare right mm-hmm. one of my least favorite types of sessions are out calls mm. oh yeah. my gosh if I listen I'll only do an out call if I really need to <laughs> yeah it's like it's like putting all my like the minimum right in a little suitcase mm-hmm. and then going into a 
hotel most likely and just like kind of knocking on someone's door going into someone else's place um first of all sketchy as fuck second like i'm not gonna be in my most dominant energy because i am like kind of concerned about my safety Right. Like, you know, like, I don't want to have to try to defend myself and like be mm-hmm. sexy in high heels and lingerie, most likely. So yeah. like, guys, just come to my dungeon. Like, you'll yeah. have a way better time and there's getting so much into more there. all this furniture, getting into all yeah. this like crazy stuff I have going on, like Venus 2000. Like, you know, I'm about to get I'm about to get a, a vacuum bed. Because mm-hmm. I'm like super ultra mega into latex and mm-hmm. I get, I could just, I just get more into it right. by, by the day. So like, please just, just come see me. Yeah. <laughs> plus it's, plus it's, it's more expensive if I, if I go to you, don't be so lazy. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's like whenever I do um, touring rates and then do like local rates, I have to add on for that, whatever, like, um, a vehicle if i am renting a car um mm-hmm. you gotta pay for like rooming yeah whatever that might be. driving oh my god when they make me yeah. don't make me drive god <laughs> just don't don't do it i hate it i'm gonna be in a bad mood when i get there i'm telling you like i'll be like all right guys all right let's do this fuck yeah. Like you want a dominatrix to drive two hours to Orlando. Like that's why I do the fucking stupid alcohol and, mm-hmm. you know, to some random hotel and like, you know, I upcharge the tits for it, yeah. but they well, still like, no, just to. come. And I'm just like, <sighs> like, look at all of the fees, like on top of everything Gas, else. time. Yeah. No, not just driving there, but driving back after doing the thing. Like, nah. Yeah. yeah it's it's very too much. I don't like it. Just come to my Do you dungeon, do any please. touring at all? I do. I love doing tours. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, I am trying really hard to save some money because I'm trying to buy some stuff. Right. Um and, and investing. But I think after I'm done with that, I think next year it's going to be lots of touring, lots of traveling, lots of mm-hmm. chilling out a little bit. I want to visit. I want to go to Chicago. I want to go back to Domcon. I want to go to Rope Craft. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to go to Kink Fest in Portland. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, it's, it's just so many, so yeah. many places I want to go. Um, I'm... I'm I'm for sure gonna be at FedCon this year though in St. Mm-hmm. Petersburg for sure. Just just to have fun really a little bit. Um <clears throat> this year I'm really focused on making content. Right. Uh really establishing my brand online, you know, um uh, mm-hmm. coming up with what if you go to the dumbhouse.com right now, you will you will see kind of like the standard booking right. uh page for all the local doms. Uh, that that work at the dom house, um, but th- this is going to eventually transition into like a clip site. Okay. Because it's going to be like the dom house productions. So mm-hmm. we are. I'm working in front of the camera, behind the camera. Right. Looking to collaborate with a lot of different artists. So if you're mm-hmm. a content creator out there, if you want to film together, just hit me up. Send yeah. me an email. Let's make it happen. Like now, really I know good we quality talked content. about your space, you being able to like uh, rent it out to people too. So what is the best way if someone wants to rent your dungeon for, whether it be a session or if they mm-hmm. just want to film content? Right. So the best way right now, because I have two sites, I have mistressrogue.com, which is where people con- contact me directly. Right. And there's the dumb house, which is where they, you can contact me as well. Uh, but but that also is um, all the all the members of the house have access to that email, and mm-hmm. it's basically just a a website where you can book with mm-hmm. everybody. Um, but if you want to rent out the dungeon, uh, just go to mistressrogue.com slash rentals, and mm-hmm. there's a very very simple uh, rental form 
um, mm -hmm. that you can send me and I'll, I'll respond like as soon as possible. I, I'm actually really on top of my emails and on top of my phone. So um, you probably get an answer within 24 hours to three days if it's a weekend. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Really open to that for sure. I just also I just want to meet other people. Um, I recently right. met the amazing Alicia Zadig, I think is how you say her name. She wrote this book, Yes, Mistress. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing, she's an amazing person. She's so bubbly and and like she has this like beautiful energy and yeah. just the fact that you know she she just came in to tour, tour the dungeon. We had some coffee. Like if you are a local domain or if you're traveling and just want to connect with other doms around the area please reach out yes, <laughs> just want to make yes. more friends I, I I love it I just I love the community you know I like whenever people are supportive in the community and they want to educate instead of like belittle mm -hmm. Because oh I mean, no, absolutely. We all no. have different knowledge levels, right? Maybe one person has more knowledge on impact play and another person has mm -hmm. more knowledge on needle play. Like that's the beautiful, beautiful thing about the industry. Yeah. Like we're you're all not different. gonna know everything. Yeah. We're all different. We'll come up with different from people. Even even locally, um all the domains that I've worked with, you know, uh at the house they all do something different yeah we're not like actually competing with each other because we all have different specialties yeah so we all have just something different to offer it and I don't think two doms are are the same at at all we all have yeah. different styles and it's right. it's beautiful yes yes yeah 100%. I fucking love it so um kind of we were talking a little bit about aftercare so Tell me more about that. So after you have a session with somebody, um, mm -hmm. especially if it's a, a new individual, what does aftercare look like? It depends. Um, it depends on a few things. The first thing being their vibe mm -hmm. um, and the energy. Again, <laughs> it's all about reading the person. Mm -hmm. Some people uh, don't actually want any aftercare. Um, yeah, and I've had that, people opt out before too. And that can be a little difficult, like as a top, because uh, tops also need aftercare. Um, if, Positive reinforcement <laughs> over, you know. Yeah, so uh, it's just like when you do a scene and then you just kind of leave, it's the same as if you just have sex with someone, you just put your clothes and go. Yeah. equally equally damaging you know so yeah. to me aftercare can be very simple um mm -hmm. I try to be very respectful of the other person because the fact that we're doing a scene doesn't mean that we have to get intimate um right. it's not always intimate um so like I'm not I don't offer like cuddling after doing a, a, a session or anything like that. I have definitely like have someone laying down on the bed and I will lay down next to them and, and mm -hmm. cover them with a blanket and offer, offer them some, some chocolate or something like that. Right. That's kind of like the extent of what I do, especially if I'm not like, um, you know, in a relate in a, in a DS relationship with somebody, mm -hmm. um, other forms of aftercare include just kind of debriefing, right. um, offering them a towel, wipey or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, offering them, you can go take a shower and then we sit down and we talk and kind of debrief. Mm -hmm. um, we, we drink some water, uh, hugs always. I always, always give people hugs. Mm -hmm. Um because I I don't know I'm a hugger I guess yeah. uh and sometimes it's just a conversation just uh yeah. how are you feeling you know did you have a good time I had a great time what would you mm -hmm. change and sometimes they just kind of jump in and ask like oh when can I come back like would you mm -hmm. like to do this again etc or oh next time maybe we can try x y or z and right. 
and that's aftercare to me yes 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah and I feel yeah. like a lot of people are kind of scared of aftercare I've had a lot of people be like what is that and it's because not enough people have the awareness that afterward it's okay to talk about it it's like this taboo thing right mm-hmm. mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. like oh well you can't talk about sex after you've had it yet that's absolutely wrong like you can absolutely talk about it because how is the person that you have just had that connection with going to know what if they you did liked right, it, yeah. what they did wrong, what could be improved if yeah. you want to be adventurous? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like we need that kind of information too. We do. I do. I actually started keeping a, a little, I use Evernote app. Uh, it's like a, like a note app. Mm-hmm. Keep a lot of things organized. And one of those I, um, uh, started having like a little notebook for every client right yeah uh, or every sub doesn't matter if it's an actual client or not with all their information your, their names right. their age do they have any like illnesses do they have any injuries so I don't have to feel like a stranger every time when they come in and like right. oh can you remind me do you have injuries yeah. <laughs> you know it's it's like not very personal I, I want right. to get personal so I keep notes and, and I'm like, oh, this person really likes this thing or, oh, they told me the secret or they told me something that was very intimate and I want to remember it, you know? Yeah. Uh, things like that. And I think those things really help. And, you know, when, when it becomes too, too many people, I, before I started taking notes, it was getting a little overwhelming. because Like then, the lines run together. Like, I will remember that this person booked and I clearly know that I've seen him a couple of times, but I cannot remember for the life of me what we did. And that's just like, damn, like how many people have I seen? (laughs) So I started taking notes. It's it's going better. (laughs) Please come back. (laughs) (laughs) And you know, um, that's what a lot of people don't understand too. Like we're human too yeah oh yeah <laughs> for sure my memory is not great <laughs> oh my I've Mm-mm. done that several times myself I even do it like if I'm watching a show like the other day I picked up a show because I was sick I was like well I'm just gonna like be in bed and chill all day so that I don't prolong the illness right mm-hmm. and I started watching this show and I didn't remember that I had watched it before and then I got like five episodes in and I'm like I've seen mm, this yeah just this looks familiar oh <laughs> my god but yeah no I had no idea that I'd seen oh it before God. so yeah that's to... definitely happened to me <laughs> oh my god! too much weed man too much weed <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on the stress and all the effort <laughs> you know I was like really tempted to take a hit before doing this where I was like you know what let me just let me let me not do that <laughs> I'll do it after <laughs> after yeah I'm not, it's funny because I have another podcast after this so today's podcast nice. day I was like that's why I was like okay let's just do it all today hell yeah hell yeah so um let me I want to ask you one more final question yeah. before I let you go so my question is whenever you are deciding kind of how you want to attempt the harder sessions like the people that literally want you to physically like be over the top like <laughs> you're beating the shit out of them <laughs> oh, I love this <laughs> what does aftercare look like in comparison so what do you do different for those <clears throat> hard like over the top <clears throat> sessions um so let's say it's like a two-hour session right I would usually have like 15 minutes of aftercare mm-hmm. and cleanup and all that stuff uh, for like a two hour of like a harder session, for example, I'll probably like end the session like 20 minutes before the actual time right. that is done. So I can have more time uh, for aftercare. Mm-hmm. Um, and even then, like if I can go after the clock, you know, if I don't have any other appointments, like right. I would definitely like just let it go longer, you know, just yeah. just give that extra time because it takes extra energy. It just takes yeah. more emotional stuff, more and more of everything. So I right. always want to account for 
you know, sometimes they cry. Sometimes mm-hmm. they they just kind of like it's kind of shocking sometimes, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like to make sure that they're safe, right? And you know, make sure because like you know, subspace and all of this like chemical reactions that happen in your body is basically like a high. Yes, one hundred percent. And and I, you know, I've done very very hardcore scenes and I know for a fact that they can't drive possibly yeah. you know after like maybe 20 minutes of like chilling chilling out a little bit and right. you know recouping um especially like people like to do poppers and stuff like that mm-hmm. um or other like substances mm-hmm. uh so Which- <laughs> always needs to be talked about there needs to be lots of information mm-hmm. like anybody that's listening there's a lot of precautions for that kind of play too yes absolutely especially health yes. you know if you have any heart conditions please don't do poppers yeah don't if you're gonna drive immediately after please don't do poppers <laughs> right yes. you know if, uh what's that called uh uh gosh when you're <clears throat> When your blood just goes to high, high, high blood pressure, please don't do poppers. <laughs> yeah. I can't do poppers. That shit just gives me a fucking throbbing headache that lasts for like three hours. Like, God, I feel like I'm missing it. The FOMO is real, but hey, yeah. you know, others can enjoy it. Right. <laughs> Not me. Right. Yeah, I'm a provider. <sighs> All good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Keep it real. (laughs) And I mean, there's different kind of flavors for us too when it comes to that stuff. Like, whenever Mm -hmm. somebody is in subspace under us, that's like a drug for us too. Oh yeah, that's all it takes. Understand that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because for you to feel that power exchange and be like over this bottom, and then being like willfully vulnerable, giving themselves. That makes me fucking high. That gets me excited, you know? Uh, yeah, you know, honestly, like, coffee <laughs> and an impact scene. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. That's all you need. Just give me a little cappuccino and let's go. Like, mm-hmm. it's just great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. It gets you all wired up and bothered. Yeah. I don't know, I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're not weird. <laughs> So if you guys have any more questions or anything about uh, the process, about aftercare, um, don't be ashamed to like reach out. There's a lot of stuff that's available on Google. You can do quick Google searches. Now, don't trust everything you see, obviously, because there are some people out there that just like to talk out of their ass. Yeah, Uh, this is true. But if you are like truly wanting more information, you can leave us questions. You can, um, if you want a session, even contact mistress rogue she Mm -hmm. has a lot of availability you can schedule something and um if you have any questions about aftercare or the process at all i mean there are plenty of doms out there that are educated and that want to teach you safety that want to teach you what really happens and they're not just like this over the top like fetish lying person like they will they will yeah like a fantasy you know yeah yeah like yeah, had, I like I like the I like the real stuff, the real real kink. Yes, me too. Mm-hmm. Me yeah, too. <laughs> for sure. I mean, I can do both, but like, if you want a watered down yeah. version, I I got you. But right. it's not as exciting. It's not as intimate. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of those things where we enjoy it more whenever we have a connection with someone, right? Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. I do. I feel like they would too. Yeah. 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 I think it's a trust issue with most of them. Absolutely. Well, I'm kind of scared to let you know me on that level. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you find someone that um, is truly into therapy and truly into providing and they love what they do, you're going to find a good environment that you want to keep coming back to Mm -hmm. because you're going to keep chasing that high. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, like there's like, again, there's different schools of doms. There's doms oh, that yes. like truly hate men. They oh, just, yeah. they're just, they can't wait to just, you know, beat the fuck out of somebody yeah. and get paid for it because 
that is like retribution almost you know yes um i don't like that if that's what you want cool find that if that's what you want that's great you know i'll do it but i mean i'm gonna enjoy in a different way yeah for sure i i don't have that like i don't hate my clients i love my clients yes and that's that's a difference yes i love it I love it. Well, thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Forbidden Depths. Again, Mr. Shrove, thank you for being so amazing, giving us the the ups and downs of impact play. And um, again, if you don't follow her on Twitter, make sure you do because at Mr. Shrove FL for Florida, because you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and also, her. sorry, and also Master Rogue, that, that I'm sorry, Master Rogue FL. Um, I have yes. two accounts now. Oh because- yeah. Oh, I just seen that in your bio, yeah. right? Yes, because I okay. I, ooh, I I'm gonna actually, follow that now. Thank you. I actually came out as uh, gender fluid. So Why? congratulations! Yeah. I did not know. When did this happen? Thank you. Uh, you know, I think it has been happening um in my like mind for a while, and then I was just like. You know, lots lots of doubt about mm. like branding and you know Yeah, one hundred percent. But then I said, Well, let me make a backup Twitter mm. account as Master Rogue I fell and and, and mm. that's the place where I'm gonna post like whatever I wanna post. You know, it's yeah. not about just Mistress Rogue's branding. And feminine side, right. Uh, exactly. And yeah. and I do have the feminine side. Let's right. let's not like cancel her at all. Right, but I yeah. also have this very mask side of me that is just like it's there, I fucking you know. Love and it. and I want to, I want to show both. Yes, because both are me, limited. you know. So yeah. So if you want to follow more of my professional Mrs. Rogue FL and more of personal Master Rogue FL. Yeah, mm-hmm. I fucking Thank love you. it. Awesome! Awesome. We will see you on the next episode of Forbidden Depths. Thank you again. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Hey, it's Queen Frostbitten again, your host. I just want to remind you that you can follow us on YouTube at Forbidden Depths. That's F-O-R-B-I-D-D-E-N-D-E-P-T-H-S. Or over on Twitter at the number four B-I-D-D-E-N. D P O D C A S T. Remember to always stay educated, consensual, and safe. We'll see you on the next show.